The Epistle to the Hebrews, Part 34, The Superiority of Christ's Priesthood. Introduction. In the first seven chapters of the Epistle to the Hebrews, the main thought is the superiority of Christ. A. To the prophets, Hebrews 1, 1 through 3. B. To the angels, Hebrews 1, 4 through 2, 18. C. To Moses, Hebrews 3, 1 through 5. D. To Aaron and his Levitical priesthood, Hebrews 5, 1 through 10 and 7, 1 through 28. 2. In showing the superiority of Jesus' priesthood, the author has done so step by step. A. Jesus is qualified to be a priest by virtue of his calling by God and his suffering, Hebrews 5, 1 through 8. B. He has been called to be a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek, Hebrews 5, 9 through 10. C. The priestly order of Melchizedek is shown to be superior by comparing Abraham and Melchizedek, Hebrews 7, 1 through 10. D. That Christ has become such a high priest has several implications, Hebrews 7, 11 through 19. 1. The Levitical priesthood could not make one perfect before God. 2. The law upon which the Levitical priesthood was based has been annulled. 3. Christ now provides a better hope through which we can draw near to God. 3. This brings us to Hebrews 7, 20-28, in which we find the climatic comparison. A. Where Jesus is contrasted with those who served in the Levitical priesthood. B. Where the superiority of Christ's priesthood is clearly demonstrated. 1. His divine appointment. A. Levitical priests were appointed by a command. 1. Beginning with Aaron, he and his descendants served in the Levitical priesthood. 2. It was a divine command that so appointed them, Exodus 28, 1-4. 3. While divinely commanded, it was not with an oath. B. Jesus was made a priest with an oath. 1. Again, the reference is to Psalms 110.4, in which God swore an oath concerning the coming Messiah and his priesthood. 2. We saw earlier that the promise joined with an oath really confirms the immutability, unchangeableness of God's counsel. Hebrews 6.17 3. Appointed by an oath, and not just a command, Jesus has become a surety of a better covenant. A. Surety means guarantor. B. Appointed by such an oath from God, Jesus guarantees the new covenant that is better. There is that key word again. 2. His eternal intercession. A. Levitical priests were limited in service by death. 1. When one died, another took his place. 2. Of necessity, there had to be many priests. B. Jesus ever lives to make intercession for us. 1. That is because he continues forever. 2. As seen earlier, Jesus came according to the power of an endless life. Hebrews 7.16 3. He therefore has an unchangeable priesthood. A. He is able to save the uttermost those who come to God through him. 1. He can do what the law could not, make one perfect, Hebrews 7.19. 2. That is, make one holy and blameless, Colossians 1.21 and 22. B. And he ever lives to make intercession for them. 1. I have always been impressed by this phrase. 2. For it suggests what Jesus is doing for us now and is most willing to do. 3 his perfect character. A. Levitical priests were sinners. 1. Some more so than others. 2. Even the best of them had to offer up sacrifices. A. On a daily basis. B. For his own sins before offering sacrifices for others. B. Jesus is separate from sinners. 1. We see our high priest described in regards to a. His holy character, 
holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners. B. His preeminent position, higher than the heavens. Thus, he does not need to offer sin sacrifices for himself. 2. This makes him a high priest, fitting, becoming, seemly for us. 4. His preeminent sacrifice. A. The Levitical priests sacrificed daily. 1. Every day they offered sacrifices for their own sins and for those of the people. 2. That they had to be continually offered implies a fundamental weakness in the efficiency of the sacrifices themselves. 3. Later we learn that the problem was the inability of animal sacrifices to make one perfect and to cleanse the conscience of sins. Hebrews 10, 14, and 9, 9. B. Jesus offered himself once and for all. A. This implies the efficiency of his sacrifice. 2. The superiority of Jesus' sacrifice will be explained further later on in Hebrews 9.11-15 and 10.11-14. Conclusion 1. In verse 28 we find a summary statement that contrasts the two priesthoods. A. The law upon which the Levitical priesthood derives its authority appoints men who have weaknesses. For example, 1. They are sinners themselves and death terminates their service. 2. Their sacrifices cannot truly remove sin, so had to be repeated daily and yearly. b. The oath given after the law and the basis for Christ's priesthood appoints the Son who has been perfect forever. For example, 1. His humanity and the obedience learned through suffering makes him most fitting to be our high priest. Hebrews 4, 17 and 18 4, 14 through 16, and 5, 8, 9. 2. His sinlessness makes the sacrifice of himself the perfect and all-sufficient sacrifice given once and for all. Hebrews 10, 12 through 14. 2. In chapters 9 and 10, the focus of this epistle will center on the superiority of Christ's sacrifice, but for now, our attention has been on those things that illustrate how great our High Priest is. A. His appointment by an oath from God, not just a command. B. His eternal intercession, not limited by death. C. His perfect character, untainted by sin. D. His permanent sacrifice, offered once and for all when He offered Himself. Don't you desire to have such a high priest interceding on your behalf? Then as Christians, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. That way we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Hebrews 4.16 Let us never forget that he lives to make intercession for those who come to God through him. Here ends part 34 of the Epistle to the Hebrews the superiority of Christ's priesthood.